Let's welcome in our co-host. He's a solo co-host today, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. I miss John Gilstrap already. But he's having fun. Thank he's, you for the <laughs> ringing endorsement of your time with me. That well, has no, been no. spent already. Thank yeah, you. Well, no, no, let me back up. We'll start again. Just no, like, no, no, just no, like I, Mary Beth, we'll start again. I, I think you've already <laughs> expressed your emotions for the day. The Hillstrap sent me a picture of the last two words of his book, which he finished on time to beat the deadline, The End. The end. I yes. sent him back a text that said you should have started with those two. That he'd have been done a long time ago. He would have. Yeah, and I, I understand uh, Mike Height was killed in the in the book. He already took oh care of it. But he Mike scared me for a second. Yeah, he no, paid no. big money for that. Yeah, he paid big money. One hundred twelve thousand five hundred six dollars <laughs> and fifty six cents. That's fifty six cents. <laughs> Do you realize that people like to take sound by? I'm, I'm like butting in you haven't introduced me yet i always do that i'm sorry but someone's going to take that sound bite of mike height has been killed and they're just going to take it out of context bill and now it's going to be all over berkeley county poor mike well if let's you, blame bill stumblefish <laughs> if you've been listening to the program for the last couple of so last month or so you hear us say that sure. quite often mike has died many a death <laughs> okay. but well. it, but but mike died heroic death i understand taking <laughs> care of a senior a senior <laughs> citizen yeah and i ask uh gail scrap identify that senior citizen <laughs> we need to know more about him us seniors us seniors need to work together so, stay wow that's interesting yeah at the uh hospice fundraising it dinner was, this yeah. summer john put up for bid a character in his newest book how, which he just creative. completed the deadline for how creative. and i think mike height uh was the top bidder he edged out jason barrett for the uh, payment to be a character in the book who gets killed. He was supposed to be a villain, but Gilstrap ultimately changed it to a uh, heroic death. Heroic, yeah, heroic death, yeah. And, and uh, Mike Height says it's funny. If Jason had realized he was bidding against Mike Height, Jason never would have stopped bidding. He would have kept going up and up and nice. up. Nice. I think they uh, ended up at over, over $2,000 uh, wow. raised for hospice on that But day. not on that one deal. We, we've we kind of exaggerated. I think it's, uh, it's a sizable amount that went to uh, to hospice for the be included in Gil Strap's book, uh, but it was not the large figure that we give. You guys are <laughs> we always can't. embellishing. We, we embellish. We don't embellish. We exaggerate <laughs> to the extreme. We never <laughs> embellish. Now, my best friend in the entire world is our guest today on the program, Mary hey. Beth Blair. I get it. <laughs> How I are get you, Mary? I get it. How are you, Mary Beth? So funny. I am well. Thank you. Great on, to see On the you. Monday of Apple Harvest Week, I am great. You it know, is. Rob, it's so great now that you've introduced her so that now she can get involved in the discussion. Yes. <laughs> I don't like to hold back, do I? And wait for my cues or introduction. Hit the ground I running. I just take over when I come. Just hit the ground running. Absolutely. Hey, what better way to start off the, this week, first segment of the show, than Apple Harvest this is our 44th festival, and we are ready to kick things off this Thursday, so we're happy to be here to share about that. And I brought a great guest with me, too, today that no one, I think, has heard from from that this perspective before. Correct. Aaron, you might have been on here. Have you ever been on TV10 before? Uh, yes, yeah. Well, I was last year during the festival. Oh, Definitely okay. uh, interviewed for that. Uh, so good, yes. mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So Aaron Howe with BCT is with us this morning, and... I just, I really wanted to give an opportunity for him to share from their perspective, their involvement with the festival. We truly were given a, a blessing in 2019 when the bank really approached us as a board and said, they looked at our sponsorship levels and they said, we would like to do more. We would like to be a significant partner. We would like to kind of marry our history with, you know, the whole, um, I guess uh, our festival is the basis of our festival is to celebrate the apple heritage of our region and the orchardists who have labored and and that's really their history too. So I'll let Aaron share a little bit more about that, but it's so important now. Our festival is it has grown and is so successful now because of their partnership. So. Well, Aaron, welcome in again. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. And uh, yeah, exactly what Mary Beth was saying. It's it's a uh, been a longstanding tradition of the bank. We were founded by roughly 38 farmers and orchardists uh, throughout the Panhandle uh, right after uh, the Civil War in 1871. Uh, so we've been around for over 150 years. Uh, but that's really what our background came from. So this this festival uh, celebrate the uh, the harvest. Uh, you know, apple harvest. It's it's really part of what we were founded on in, in a way and uh we felt we saw that how 
the it really aligned with everything that we were, wanted to be a part of in the community uh, and, and an opportunity for us to give back and help promote an event. Very nice. Well, welcome in again. Well, thank you. Great to have you here. I did not know that was the story for the Bank of Charlestown. Right. I, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's 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 uh, we, we're strong in history for sure, and uh, it's it's uh, throughout the Panhandle, and um, yeah. And what, another really cool thing about BCT, they're headquartered in Charlestown, and that is a lot of people. We talked about this last week when I was here. A lot of people feel like this is just a Berkeley County or a Martinsburg Festival, mm -hmm. and truly it's not. It's the whole Eastern Panhandle, and they, they too, represent that, and they're, they're headquartered in, in Charlestown. And so it's just such a, it's a unique fit, and it's not just a financial commitment that they've made to our festival to help us with um, just putting, you know, the, it's the, ba the meat, the backbone of our festival from that perspective. Um, but the, how many volunteers, Aaron, would you say from the bank that, that volunteer their time to be out in the community and help us with the, to man the events? Well, it's, it's probably close to 60 to 75, somewhere in that neighborhood. I don't know the exact amount, but, uh, it's what's, what's interesting about it is you, know, you, you talk about it not being just, you know, we're, we're our headquarters in Charlestown. Of course, we have branches throughout the Eastern Panhandle and, and Berkeley County as well, but we also have uh, branches in Loudoun County and then Washington County, Maryland. And so it actually pulls in, we're yes. pulling in people from all of our branches and they want to be a part of this mm -hmm. and want to volunteer and they enjoy uh, the festival and the events right. that we, we, uh, we help out with and we attend. So yeah. uh, it comes comes full circle for the, our employee base, and they really enjoy being involved. Plus, I, they've been able to help us in those other markets by putting our magazine and our brochures and just, you know, bringing outside people outside of the area to the festival. So we really appreciate that as well. The other thing I love about Aaron's story and his connection to the festival, not just through the bank, is he also has festival all in his house so you can you tell us a little bit about your connection Aaron. yeah my, my wife was uh queen pomona 24 uh so she uh that was uh about 20 years ago uh, right before i met her but she was a uh, apple harvest queen uh back then and then my daughter uh, last year served on the court as court jester so uh my daughter taylor so my wife uh, jennifer has uh been heavily involved i know she's she's continued her her dress was on display yes. this uh past week uh at uh, the rubies and rhinestone event uh and uh, so it's definitely been a part of something we've taken part in even before the bank's involvement. Very right. cool. Very nice. And and she's uh, our mistress of ceremonies at the coronation ceremony Friday. We always try to have a former Queen Pomona do that. And so this year is Jennifer. So 19 years. Do you uh, Does the festival mark p specific years for specific Queen Pomonas, like a 25th or a 10th uh -huh. or whatever? Yes, we are all, we ha each one has a Roman, a Roman, a Roman numeral yeah. attached to their title. So... That is like we are getting ready to. It's funny the girls all, they 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 take their number and they 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 have fun with it. But this year's is they call her X Live because it's X L I V for forty mm -hmm. fourth. But that's the this year's Queen Pomona when she is crowned. Which you met Brittany last week, and Brittany, as we said, is from Jefferson County as well. Yeah, she was fun. So yes, yeah, she really is. She's a sweet girl. So. But we have a lot to, to do this week. Aaron and Jennifer will be a part of that, as well as all the BCT folks. And, you know, you'll see them out. They always are in their shirts, and they're usually serving in some capacity, whether it's the pancake breakfast or taking money at the gate for us or whatever. The We basically give them a list of all of our events, and we t each committee chairperson says, I would like to have 10 volunteers at this event. And then they take all of that that master list of events and volunteers needed and they allow their 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 bct employees to volunteer in whatever capacity they can and so some of their team are with us the whole weekend and they just bring such a spirit to it they they really enjoy being there so there's just such a buy-in on their part and that really helps because i've said it before we're an vol all volunteer board we do not have a paid staff at any capacity so our board members are all active roll your sleeves up get out and work the festival um, kind of board. So we really depend on volunteers in the community. So uh, the first event that kicks everything off is when? 
was, as you, we've talked about before, we had a couple pre-festival events last week. On Thursday, we had Ruby and Rhinestone. It was fantastic out at the Purple Iris. And then this weekend, the Fall Classic kind of got off to a wet start, and they've played a few ball games. Uh, they played some pool play last week and a few games yesterday evening once they got the fields cleaned up. And they have games today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And then the actual unofficial official uh, event of festival is Thursday the 19th, the, the gala or gala. What do you call I it? I call it gala. Okay. I, that's what I call it. Because Someone the other day said, no, it's a gala. It's a gala like, apple. So it should be I a agree. gala affair. Well, right? some people call them gala apples. Who knows? Like, <laughs> that's what I say. But yeah, so that's at the um, Hollywood Casino Ballroom. Mm -hmm. And that'll be Thursday. And we will introduce our honored West Virginian. And we're excited to do that. Can I? I'll, I'll just give you. Uh, she's already been introduced this week, so I'll tell you. It's uh, Virginia Sign, and it's very cool that she. And we'll get to share this at all of our events this week that she attends, which will be all of them. She has been to every single festival, has ridden in every single parade, or been in in the parade either as. Um, a circuit clerk when she was circuit clerk, or she's walked with her daughter when she was in a twirling um, unit. So she she has been a she was on the board as well. So she's been to every coronation. So it's kind of there's a she we chose her for her service to our community, but also for her. I guess, faithfulness to our fef festival and all the things that she has, she's always been a part of it. So that'll be neat. So we'll honor her Thursday night at the gala. And then Friday, there's three major events. We have the uh, Pomona Ladies Brunch, which Miss West Virginia 2022, Elizabeth Lynch will be speaking at because her platform was all about promoting agriculture, as you all know. Um, and then we have the coronation at Airborne. It's going to be stunning. And then the ball, the, the Queen's reception and Grand Ball Friday night. And, of course, Saturday, we're fingers crossed for that weather to to be on our side and be beautiful for the, the parade downtown. What time does the parade begin? It's at 1 o'clock. And before that, at 1030, we have another event that the bank is extremely involved in. Aaron can tell you about that event, but that's at 1030. Yeah, we have the uh, Bob Barriner Apple Trample uh, 5K that's going to take place right uh, pretty much following the parade route. Uh, it, it starts and uh, ends at, uh, I guess, Martinsburg High School. Right. Uh, so it's it's been something we've been a sponsor of for a, a, a while. And, uh, you know, our former president, Bob Barriner, uh, at BCT, you know, he was a, a great man. And uh, I, I had an opportunity to work with him for uh, over 10 years. And uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a way to um, uh, honor him uh, through that 5K. But, yeah. Very nice. Uh, how many years has BCT been involved with the Apple Harvest Festival? Do you know off the top of your head? So it's it's been since 2019 uh, that we've been directly involved with with the Apple Harvest Festival. So uh, that many years, and I know that it's we talked about the volunteers, and and so we have people that you know whenever they we start talking about it internally, they're like, oh yeah, I, I, go ahead and put me on that event. I need to be here. I, I want to do this, and yeah. I want you know. I got to be at the. I want. I want to count money, or I want to take money at the gate at, at this time, so I can enjoy the pancake breakfast and then do this. And, mm -hmm. and so it's it's uh, it's always funny because uh, we we do we have that tradition now. Of people signing up and getting ahead of that, that and wanting to be involved for their favorite spots. That yes. pancake breakfast is so good. I was good. asked if there are rain plans for the parade if that happens. It's not going to rain. Actually, but, uh, um, actually, it's supposed to rain, Mary Beth. Well, but uh, so no. if it does rain, what it's, do they do? It's not. I mean, it's, it, it, I've seen it go back and forth. So okay. rain, what we do with rain, and as far as I know with the history of the festival, I've only been on the board since 2018 myself, but um, we've always had it in most weather conditions. I have marched in it with my daughter when, when she was in, in the parade as a, as a youth dancing in the rain, in the yeah. snow, in good weather, and in bad yeah. weather. So unless it would be dangerous rain, We'll have it. I Good. mean, it, it could be a rainy parade. It could be a warm parade. It could be, I mean, that's just the chance. I mean, this time of year, you could get just about any exactly. kind of weather. But as for now, it's, I, I don't like to say rain or shine, but then we got ourselves in trouble with another parade, Christmas parade one year where we actually had to. But that was because it was at nighttime and it was raining and the streets were slippery and it was dark and dreary. You know, that's a little different than us. We'll be in the broad daylight and a little rain is not going to keep us. So I would say, I can remember as a child literally sitting out on the sidewalks, on blankets, in raincoats, rain umbrellas, and watching the people go by. So... Yes, I was asked, so I had to pass Absolutely. the question Absolutely, yes, because right. you know I don't like negative <laughs> well, I don't think questions. It's, it's not negative. It's, no, that's, just, that's, what's your contingency absolutely. if you get rain? Yeah. 
Yeah. The public wanted to know. The public has asked. Yes, sure. Yeah. I'm happy to respond. All right. Do you know how many bands will be in All the of the pool? high school bands will be in there, and I believe South Middle School as well, So, you know, uh, and, and some from Jefferson County. So I believe we have at least five, maybe six. Sometimes we have some neighboring state bands come to, to be in it as well. But our parade is definitely going to be fantastic and back to its former glory before um, you know, we had a year or two where we couldn't mm-hmm. have the parade. So we're excited about that. Anything else in the parade that would be besides the bands that will be featured that you're aware of? Uh, yes, the BCT car. <laughs> we, we Remember, have, don't we, throw candy at people. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Well, I know yeah. we have lots of floats in there. And, of course, it will feature our, our court and queen. That's mm-hmm. always – everyone always enjoys seeing them. And um, we – I know that um, the horses will be there, and that's – everybody loves the horses, right? Um, and lots of cars. And, um, yeah, and our grand marshal will be in the parade. So – the, it'll be a lot of great things. Who is the Grand Marshal? Our, she was on here, I believe, the day Christian's that you might not, not have been here. Yes, Skylar Shea um, okay. Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. So she will be joining us. She'll be at most of our events that she's flying in. Uh, she and Christian, and they'll meet us at the at the gala at, at the racetrack on Thursday, and they'll be at the gala, the the breakfast on Friday, the coronation, the the grand ball, and then Saturday in the parade, and then after the parade. Um, of course, all day at the the the, fest, the fairgrounds, we have um, the pancake breakfast in the morning. But then arts and crafts festival will be open. We have over eighty vendors this year. So last year it was sixty. We're up to eighty. We've got all of the buildings filled and outdoor areas filled. So that would be a great thing for people to come out to. And I know Sunday is looking clear, at least in the weather forecast now. So, but uh, we have a rodeo that night, and I know Skylar will be at that, and she'll be signing autographs on Sunday from one to three as well so out of the fairgrounds mm-hmm. yeah and it does it cost to get into it the does fairgrounds? cost to get in if uh I, I believe it's 10 and under are free but five dollars per person i think that's extremely reasonable well the uh helps other, us pay for the fairgrounds basically well the other events like the apple pie contest and such take place at the fairgrounds or those yes. are separate locations apple pie contest starts on it, it actually happens on friday uh where they bring their pies their judge you've judged before right i have there. yes wonderful. and then yeah. uh we sell pies the the all of the pies get sold um saturday throughout the day to anyone who is interested and then we auction off the top winners on sunday so that will be happening at the fairgrounds. There's also several educational displays for apples. There's apple eating, apple peeling. We talked about apple peeling last week. 72 um, uh, feet is the longest apple peel. Yeah, I know. Isn't, uh, that, in, isn't that insane? That's insane. Yes, I, I really did not is. believe it, but they said it. I want to see a photograph of that, truly. I'm, I'm putting that on you for I have one more we have one more interview where I'm not coming to that when you're going to interview our reigning queen Pomona Olivia Travis and uh, joining her will be court or board member who's also the coronation chair uh, Courtney Funk and they'll be here I believe Thursday with you mm-hmm. guys maybe you can show her a picture and I or you know send it to me because I just I don't believe it now, I haven't seen the picture yet that's just okay. in the Guinness Book of World Records well if I guess if it's in that then it's legit right it's verified mm-hmm. right. You wouldn't think. I mean, I don't know what size apple it was or what kind. I just know that's what it says the record is. Yeah, who told us that last week? Well, I, I did the apple trivia last oh, week. And that's oh, that's what yes, it was. Yes. That's, okay. Some trivia facts about apples, and that was one of them. And it's on the Internet, so it's we, gotta we, oh, well, it's got to yeah. be true. Yeah. It's got to be true, yeah. It's got to be true. It did cite as a citation the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. yeah. Because they have there's a record for everything, even some very obscure things like the longest continuous apple peel. Hey, who knew? I can't imagine how thin you would have to make that peel as you're peeling an apple and why you even tried yeah <laughs> how right. thin and also how narrow would the the uh the peel would have to be uh, yeah it's i mean think about it apple's mm-hmm. not like a pumpkin yeah. like there was just some world record pumpkin grown that was like twelve thousand pounds or two thousand wow. pounds whatever it was yeah. i don't know how you transport that i don't know how it gets that big but that was just some record i heard last week yeah. about the world's yeah. biggest yeah. pumpkin yeah. wow so I don't that's... think there's any 2,000-pound apples out there. <laughs> yeah. No. Let, let me go back to Mary Beth's yes. entry. Uh, just, uh, she came in earlier this morning, and I and Mary Beth's always a breath of fresh air. But today I think you were even more so. <laughs> you were just, <laughs> and we we mentioned a couple of subjects, and and that that took care of the conversation. Mary was very pa- Mary Beth so passionate about. It. But I appreciate very much you shining the spotlight on the sponsors and the volunteers. Yes. So often we default to the parade 
parade or right. to the pancake breakfast or the coronation yes. and the like, things that people are more familiar with. We tend to forget about what makes us go. Oh, we absolutely. We tend to forget about the, the sponsors, BCT mm-hmm. and other sponsors. We forget about the many, many, many volunteers that not only work during the day right. or during the week of apple harvest, uh, but we also forget about the people that work the whole year round. Right, so. yeah. We have a great committed board of, I believe it's around 15 of us, and we certainly, as soon as we finish this one, we'll start on the next sure. one. And so yeah. it's a lot of hours, and we we couldn't do it without that commitment and that yeah. dedication. Yeah. And I, I, I love what Aaron said about his the team at BCT just looking forward to they know that's who they are as a bank is giving back to the community and investing and that's part of their dna and they love the opportunity to serve it's not just that they don't have to they're not being paid to be there they have to volunteer it's a volunteer opportunity and and they come with they they have the same like passion and 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 excitement to do that and that's what makes our community so unique i i have to share this story about ruby and rhinestone last thursday we had, it was the most wonderful experience for me as someone who promotes the festival, but I was checking in ladies to the fest, to the event, which it's an all women event. We decorate our shoes. We have a shoe parade. It's supposed to be all our apple harvest festival, you know, uh, themed. And I had this, the last person I checked in, the lady said her name and she had her daughter with her. And I said, oh, wow. Did you guys come? Who did you come with? Whose table do you want to sit with? She goes, well, we don't have anyone to sit with. This is our first time at any apple harvest event we just moved here from utah in july and we saw this festival online being promoted and we read about the events and my daughter and i thought it would be fun and her daughter decorated her little flats and she had little unicorns eating apples and little apple decorations all over her shoes her mom decorated hers and so they came to this event just wanting to immerse themselves into our local community culture and had the best time she her her daughter even won the little flats and fat flats and fabulous uh division of our shoe parade and none of the judges knew this story about them like i didn't share it ahead of time but it was so neat that they actually saw in her shoes like just this excitement for our festival and to me that's what it's all about these people coming new to our community and finding this as like the slice of life that but but there's another part to it yes. the, the the opposite side uh and that is the willingness of our community to accept people yeah. like their mother and daughter right and this is what bonnie and i found to be most appealing about the area uh we were immediately welcomed with open arms 25 26 yeah. years ago and it's uh and i, I you use the word unique I've said this many times on the show, Rob, and I'll say it many more times in the future. That's what I think is most unique about yes. the Eastern Panel. You're welcoming to, to folks you don't right. know, mm-hmm. strangers that come in. Mm-hmm. And I, this is a major tribute to right. the people here. Mary Beth, are you wearing Apple earrings? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mm-hmm. just noticed Apple that earrings. hanging by your headphones. I, I had one of my Apple pens from one of my, the many luncheons I've been honored to attend. I had an Apple necklace on them. I'm like, I think I'm a little overboard. I won't do it all today. Where, where does but, one purchase an Apple earring? Um, I got mine on Amazon. <laughs> 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 but only because none of the local jewelry stores, you know, I would buy everything local that I could. But if mm-hmm. you can't find it, then Amazon usually has it, right? Sure. So, you know, it's funny, too. Another thing, you, what you just said, Bill, made me think about something Skylar said at her interview a couple of weeks ago when we were out in the orchards. And she said she described this area as something out of a Norman Rockwell painting. Mm-hmm. And that's what she thought the first time she came here. She actually, one of the, her first visits to the area was when, when Christian was Cause she grew up in LA, the Grand Marshal. Right? Oh, yeah. So she's an L.A. girl. And so she said, I always feel like I'm stepping into a uh, Norman Rockwell painting when I come. So Hey, we are just about out of time. Uh, again, how can you find out more about all the activities for the Apple Harvest Festival, Mary Beth? So easy. Two great options. Jump on our Facebook page because it has more details than Instagram. But also our website is easy to remember, msahf.com. Aaron, good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having us. Closing thought from you, sir. Uh, no, just appreciate having us, and uh, we enjoy being involved in this, and so uh, definitely uh, looking forward to the festival this week. And how can you find out more about the Bank of Charlestown? Uh, visit our website, f- Facebook page, but uh, mybct.com. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. See you next fall. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Mar- sooner than that. <laughs> Mary Beth, I won't see you later this week. Sorry about that. But you'll be sending a Queen Pomona in your I will. Place. I will. You'll love her. What number is she? She's 43. 43. And the new one is 44. 
That is correct. 